Hello, thank you for watching, listening this morning. I pray that the message you are about to hear will strengthen you in your faith. I pray it will encourage you in your walk with Jesus. If you have any questions that I could answer, please feel free to send me an email. My email is pepper at fbcmv.com. So now, enjoy the message this morning. There. Take your Bible and open it to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43 and find verse 18. Isaiah chapter 43, find verse 18. Now, Isaiah is right there past the Psalms. If, you'll, uh, if you're in a Bible, Psalms and then Proverbs and then Ecclesiastes, the little book of Song of Solomon, and then the long 66th chapter prophecy of Isaiah. Find 43, chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. And I want to speak to you today on the subject, looking for God's next something new. Looking for God's next something new. So let me begin reading Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will glorify me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. Let's, let's pray for one another right now. I want to pray for you. I'm going to ask that God speak to your heart today. Nothing distracts you from receiving the word that he has for you today. And uh, I, I want you to pray for me. Ask the Lord just to speak through me to you. Pray for yourself as well. Ask, ask God to, to speak to your heart today. So let's pray for one another. There's so much to this morning, Father, I feel like that you need to say. And so I, I, I don't want to get in the way of anything like that. And so, Father, fill me with your spirit and speak through me. And Father, the word today needs to land on individuals because they're there are those, Father, that need to hear your truth in their life today. But, Father, this word also needs to fall on us as your people here at First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon. For I truly believe, Father, there is something new you want to do in our midst. And I pray, Father, that as we consider your word today, may the application be that individual application would be made that's my prayer but also father and and today I'm just asking maybe more importantly that corporately the application would be found as we a people that you as this verse says that you have formed for yourself that in our midst you would do something new and I pray that in Jesus name amen I had a Jesus conversation yesterday. I, I was in a local business and the person uh, said to me, Pastor, I, I haven't seen you in the new year yet. What, what's the word for 2023? That's an open door. You, you need to learn to recognize those open doors. I mean, I didn't even have to initiate the conversation. When, when, when somebody, what's the word for, for 2023? God had already prepared them to hear what I was about to tell them. They themselves opened the door. Would you learn to open? Would you learn to recognize open doors? Because every week, Maybe every day, but certainly every week, God is going to give you opportunity to have a Jesus conversation with somebody. 
And when that person behind the counter yesterday said, Pastor, I haven't seen you yet in the new year. What's the word for 2023? I looked at them and I said, the word for 2023 is that God wants to do something new in your life. It is a new year, and there's something new coming your way. It says that in Isaiah 43. Now, you should have seen the look on their face. Their eyes got about that big around. And they said, now, where is that again? And they pulled up the verses on their computer that I just read to you. And they read them out loud right there in the store and I said to them you may be in the wilderness but God's going to make a roadway out you may be in the desert but God is sending you a river in that desert they looked at me stunned And then they said, Pastor, that is exactly what I needed to hear. That I, I've been trying to make a decision this way or that way. And what you just told me confirmed in my heart something new is coming in my life. And we just had a Holy Ghost moment right there. Uh, I, I prayed for that person out loud right there in the store. I don't Who's behind me? I don't know. But anyway, I, I prayed for them right there out loud in the store. Because something new is coming. Dear family, let me tell you that this passage in Isaiah chapter 43 is the passage that led me to you. 30 years ago in Vivian, Louisiana... Visited by a pulpit committee for Mount Vernon. All I knew about Mount Vernon was at the hometown of Don Meredith. Because I'd watch Monday Night Football and I knew that. But I began to pray about whether or not the Lord wanted me to leave Vivian and come to Mount Vernon. I began to seek God's will. I began to ask God to show me something from His Word that would give me direction. And one morning in my devotions, I came across Isaiah 43 and those words there that said, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth, jumped out of the pages of my Bible and into my heart. And the Lord told me there is something new he wants to do in the life of First Baptist Church, Mount Vernon. And Pepper, there is something new he, I want to do in your life as well. And I came. Now here we are 30 years later and I stand here today to tell you there is still something new the Lord wants to do. There is still another new work he wants to do in our midst. I found it interesting this week as I was preparing this message, this thought just kind of hit me. Jesus was 30 years old when he began his earthly ministry. Maybe after 30 years, Jesus wants to begin a new ministry in this place. Among us. A new work. Take us to a new level. Work in us His work. And so here's the life point this morning. Here's how I want to connect these verses of Scripture with your life. Look for the something new by letting the Lord shape you. I, I would have said us, but it didn't rhyme. Look, look for the something new by letting the Lord shape us. Because this message this morning, as I've already prayed and told you, this message this morning is for us with some you thrown in, okay? It's for us, but there's a little bit of you thrown in here. I'm sure there's individuals who need to hear this today as well. Look at verse 18 again. Verse 18 says, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will, make, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. 
What that is saying is don't dwell nostalgically on what has happened in the past. Don't keep referring to the good old days. Because although you may have a grand past, God has a glorious future planned for you. Eagerly anticipate then the something new that God is about to do. Now, historically, the context of Isaiah is that God is about to bring the nation of Israel out of exile in Babylon and plant them back in their homeland, the land he had promised to Abraham. And so, historically, the context of this passage of Scripture, when it says, do not call to mind the former things, that is the deliverance out of Egypt. That is the nation of Israel's deliverance from Egypt when Moses led them out of slavery. That's the plagues that God did, the the parting of the Red Sea, God's provision for them in the wilderness. The nation had seen God act gloriously in their past. It was indeed a grand past. But God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. God is about to bring his people out of Babylon and back into the land that he promised to Abraham and then the stage will be set and the clock will begin ticking down to the arrival of the Messiah. I I believe God would say something very similar to you and me this morning. Something very similar to us this morning. You ain't seen nothing yet. I've I've done some wonderful things in in your life. I've done some terrific things in your former days. but, But I'm about to do something new in your midst. And it is so much greater than anything you have ever seen. Listen, dear family, that's the Lord talking to us. That is the Lord God talking to us. He says... For 30 years I've been planting you and now the sprouting is about to take place. For 30 years I have been planting seeds in this congregation and now the springing forth is about to take place. Verse 19 says, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, a a river in the desert. There's somebody that needs to hear that today. God is about to lead you out of your wilderness. He's about to provide for you in the, in the midst of your desert. What formerly was a barrier to you will now be a blessing. And what is an obstacle in your life, you will now overcome it. Look at verses 20 and 21. Hard verses to interpret. Beast of the field, jackal and ostriches. Ostriches. They're poetic, yes, to some extent. God will pour out blessings, deliverance, and supply on his people that even the animals will take notice. Jackals and ostriches were animals that had a reputation for being notoriously unfriendly I I just think it means even those unfriendly towards you the people that give you trouble will notice the work that God is doing in your life even the folks that give us trouble even the unfriendly folks in Franklin County will notice Something's up at First Baptist Church. Something's up. And the wilderness walls that have faced us and prevented us from certain ministries will be gone. And the desert obstacles that have hindered our gospel penetration are going to be destroyed. Verse 21 says, God is not through with you, and God is not through with us. He is still forming you into the person that he's called you to be, and he is still shaping us 
into a people that pleases Him, and we will praise Him for that. Look for the something new by letting the Lord shape you, us. Dear family, I'm excited. God's, God's best at FBC is, is yet to be. Firmly believe that, that we are on the verge of something new that the Lord wants to do. Great things have happened here in the last 30 years. Now, they've not all been good. And, and somebody asked me the other day, 30 years in one place? How do you stay 30 years in one place? And I said, you are grateful for the high times and you are faithful in the dry times. And in, and in 30 years... There have been high times and there have been dry times. There have been times when wonderful things took place. We, we have seen the Lord save people, hundreds and hundreds of people. As I look back across the records this week, hundreds and hundreds of people have been saved. We have seen miracles. We have seen physical miracles take place. We have seen financial miracles take place. We have seen the Lord act in ways that brought Him glory. We've seen Him accomplish things that only He can do. And yet, there is something new still that He wants to do. There is something new that He still wants to do in your life. And there's something new that he still wants to do in our midst. So let's look for it. Let's anticipate it. Let's expect it. Verse 19 says, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? Let's be aware of it. Let's welcome it. And then, in, in my preparation for this message, the Lord said, there's more I need you to say to them. I said, okay. So far, it's been wonderful. <laughs> so far, I, I can take that message to them on Sunday morning, Lord. I'll share that with them gladly. The Lord said, there's more. There's something else I need to say to them. I said, what is it? And he said, tell them how they will miss it. And then tell them how they will see it. Tell them how they will miss the something new that I want to do. And then tell them how they can experience the something new that I want to do. So... First, what would keep us from experiencing God's something new? What would keep us from experiencing the something new in our midst that He wants to do? Even in your individual life, what would cause you to miss it? What would cause us as First Baptist Church Mount Vernon to miss the something new that God wanted to do? He gave me two scriptures. The first one is Ephesians 4, 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We'll miss the something new that God wants to do if we grieve the Holy Spirit. How, how, how do we do that? How do, we, how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, you grieve the Holy Spirit when you deliberately refuse to obey what you know to be the will of God. You grieve the Holy Spirit when you choose not to obey His authority in your life. You grieve the Holy Spirit when you do what you want to do instead of what God wants done in your life. Do you remember the history that is recorded in Joshua chapter 7? Israel's army 
had just defeated and captured the great city of Jericho. And they did it the Lord's way. They did it exactly in obedience to His command. They did it exactly as God had told them to do it. And under His authority, they went out and for six days... They marched one time around the city of Jericho. And then on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. And they blew the trumpets. Now, I don't know whether you know it or not, but that's not exactly great military strategy. For conquering a walled city. But that's how God had told them to do it. And they obeyed. And they did it. They marched around it seven times. They blew the trumpets and the Lord's way. And Jericho was defeated. Do you know what the next town on the map was? Ai. Ai. And it's about as big as it is to spell it. It's a little bitty wide place in the road. Kind of like Winfield. About as big as its name is, Ai. Well, it wasn't a win field for the nation of Israel. Why? Because there was sin in the camp. That they didn't obey God. They didn't listen to God. They just thought they would take this one on their own. And Achan had taken some of the goods from Ai contrary to what God had told them to do, and kept it for themselves. He kept it for himself and his family. He grieved the Spirit of God, and it led to defeat. And Israel missed the blessing of God because they grieved the Holy Spirit through their disobedience to His will. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we get caught in the snare of rebellion. Has God told you to do something and you've not done it? You're grieving the Holy Spirit. Has God said no, but you have not stopped? You're grieving the Holy Spirit. And you will miss the something new that God wants to do. We will miss the something new that God wants to do if we don't march under the authority and the lordship of Jesus Christ in the life of this church. Now, we we will also grieve the Holy Spirit when we fail to treat one another as the Lord wants us to do so. You, You don't have to read any further than the next verse In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Verse 31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Why would that verse follow a verse that says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God? Why would right after that verse we read the words, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you along with malice? Because those are the mannerisms, the characteristics, the actions, the attitudes that grieve the Holy Spirit. How much of that's in your life lately? How much of those actions and attitudes have been in your life lately? When we grieve the Holy Spirit, we'll miss the something new. Here's the second scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the Spirit. Quenching is different than grieving the Spirit. Scripture, Scripture often uses the metaphor of fire to describe the work of the Holy Spirit. And the imagery here in 1 Thessalonians 5.19 is of someone pouring water on a fire and putting it out. Pouring water over something the Holy Spirit is trying to do. 
and putting out the fire of the Spirit and stopping, halting in its tracks the work that the Spirit of God wants to do. That is quenching the Spirit. And I put three words on the screen in parentheses underneath that. There are three ways you quench the Spirit's fire in your life. There are three ways that we will pour water on the fire of the Holy Spirit in this congregation. There are three ways that you quench the Spirit's fire in your life or worse in the life of this church. The first one is rushing. And what I mean by that is that you never take time to stop and ask the Holy Spirit how He wants it done. You never take time to stop and ask the Holy Spirit how would you like for me to do that? You never take time to stop and ask the Holy Spirit. You never take time to stop to listen to His voice. Because your lifestyle is so busy. Because you are so overcommitted. Because you are running here and there every day. And you never practice be still. Richard Foster in his book Celebration of Discipline writes this, Hurry is not of the devil. Hurry is the devil. Rushing will cause you to quench the spirit. The second thing is presuming. Sometimes we make the presumption that we already know how God wants to do it. Sometimes we just presume that we know what God wants to do or we presume we know how God wants to work in a particular situation. And so we draw a conclusion based on a presumption and we haven't taken the time to listen to the Spirit and when we presume, we quench the Spirit's fire. Well, I just assumed God has always blessed this way of doing it. And that's not the way He wanted it done this time. Many, many of you have strong opinions, because I talk to you every day, often. Many of you have strong opinions, and you presume God agrees with you. So you rely more on those opinions rather than seeking God's will. And then the third way you quench the Spirit is through ignoring. You ignore the fact that the Holy Spirit may want to do it in a different way. But we've always done it this way before. Those are eight words that will lead a church to its death. There is a wonderful something new coming our way. Believe it with all my heart, folks. There is a wonderful something new coming our way if we are willing to listen and obey the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we'll miss it. You, we miss the something new that God wants us to do. You miss the something new that God wants you to do when you grieve the Holy Spirit and when you quench the Holy Spirit. The Lord said, tell them how... They'll miss it. And then he said, tell them how they can experience it. Let me tell you that. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Turn to Acts chapter 2. I've read this passage hundreds of times. Maybe thousands of times as a pastor. Never saw this phrase. Never saw this phrase, jump out at me like it jumped out at me this week. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Context, of course, is the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise Noise filled like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Read that verse, as I said, hundreds if not thousands of times, and had never seen, jumped out at me this week, just, just right out of the pages of the Bible into my head. There came from heaven. 
the something new that God did in Acts chapter 2. The fulfillment of the promise that Jesus made. All the blessings that followed here on the day of Pentecost happened because something came from heaven. It was not man-made. It was supernatural from God. Peter preached. 3,000 people got saved. And it all began by God sending something from heaven. Dear family, we need something from heaven. That's how we'll see it. That's how we'll see the something new that God has for, for us. We need to anticipate something coming from heaven. We need to look for something coming from heaven. We, we need to expect something coming from heaven. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on me. Break me. Melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. And now we're back to Isaiah 43, where verse 21 says, The people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Break us, melt us, mold us, fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. May every one of us here today look for the something new. In our own lives and in our midst here at First Baptist Church. Look for the something new by letting the Lord shape. You. Let's pray. Father, we, we got some of it today, Father. We got introduced to the idea that there is something you want to do in our midst. Something brand new. Seal what we've heard in our hearts. And in a week from now and a month from now and three months from now, Father, let us remember what we heard today, what we learned today. And I pray, Father, let, let, let me pray, Father, for, for the individual, for, for that one or two or three that, that just needed maybe a change in direction. They're facing a decision. They don't know which way to turn. They don't know which direction to go. And yet, Father, today you have confirmed in their life that there is something new that you want to do in their life. I pray, Father, for the one that's in the wilderness and in the desert. And let them see from these words, Father, that you're going to meet them there and lead them out. Father, don't, don't let them miss it by, by grieving your spirit or quenching your spirit. But Father, I pray for us. First Baptist Church, Mount Vernon, right here, county seat, town, Father, got a county of 10,000 people and Oh, Father, do a work. We, we need something from heaven, Father. We don't need anything that my ability can conjure up. The skill of this staff, as talented as they are. and as, We don't need anything that we can plan. And we need to hear from you. 
We need something from heaven. Father, don't let us miss it. And so we seek to align ourselves under the Lordship of Jesus, not grieving the Spirit within us, not quenching the Spirit within us, but anticipating and looking for something from heaven, Father. That's my prayer for us in this new year. And I pray that in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for watching, listening to our service this morning. If you have a question about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, or if you desire to become a Christian, would you please send me an email? I want to help you. My email address is pepper at fbcmv.com. Or if you would like to know more information about the ministries here at First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, let me direct you to our website. Our website is fbcmv.com, and it is there that you will find a whole host of information about the ministries we have for your children, for your students, and for you as well. So the website address again is fbcmv.com. Again, thanks for listening today, and may you have a blessed week. I hope you'll tune in again and watch next Sunday.